All right, when you thought it couldn't get any worse, these schemes, scams, and hacks keep happening on a daily basis. And here we go again. Let's get right into it. So we have JP Morgan Chase customers life saving swiped in a sophisticated scam. And here's the nice little addition to all this whole latest scam is why Apple is abruptly deleting apps in response to this latest scheme, scams, and hack. Anyway, before we get started, let's just thank the Daily Hoddle for if, if it wasn't for um, alternative news sites like this reporting on stuff like this, you really want to know about it. Mainstream is not going to report on this because I don't think JP Morgan and Apple want to know you're being scammed and schemed using their own devices and stuff. You got to be careful out there. So let's jump right into it. All right. The loss of yet another JP Morgan Chase customer's life saving has sent Apple, Apple scrambling to remove a group of apps from their app store. Yeah, the Chase customer says her account was drained after she, she uh, had received a call that appeared to be from the bank. The phone number on her caller ID matched the number on the back of her Chase debit card, but the caller was a scammer, boo, who convinced her to transfer her money to another account. Yeah, right there, there should have been a red flag, right? Anyway, the scammer, the thief, uh, used a technique called spoofing to mimic Chase's actual phone number. And it could be anyone's phone number, not just the bank's. Uh, this is a practice Verizon says should be illegal. Personally, personally, I did think it was illegal. You're basically fraud saying that you're from somebody else calling you and you're basically being a, fr a fraudulent person. But yeah, I guess it's not illegal. Oh, well. All right, they said they found spoofing can be easily done through the Apple App Store. And I'm sure through the uh, Android App Store as well. All right, on Apple's App Store, they found multiple apps that use spoof numbers, including one prank calling app that let us spoof that same Chase Bank number for free. So they tried it out and they were able to use the same phone number for that Chase Bank account to uh, basically do a prank. And it worked. Boy, it even showed Chase Bank on the caller ID on one attempt. So anyway, Apple says it has sophisticated, wink, wink, systems in place to thwart. That's a hard word to say, thwart, thwart, fraudulent apps. And the uh, company quickly deleted a pair of unnamed apps that the, uh, the uh, press called out. Um, so they just pretty much contradicted themselves. They have sophisticated systems in place to find these fraud apps, but the, quick, the company quickly deleted manually. You know, Timmy Cook, uh, Steve Jobs wannabe, went in there, called his little henchman and said, you better delete that before it gets out. And then uh, they deleted the apps by hand. So they're sophisticated systems. Yeah, they ain't so sophisticated. I think they're really missing Steve Jobs right about now. All his ideas he wrote down before he passed away have been used up and Tim Cook is floundering around trying to be uh, rel uh, relevant and coming up with ideas. I don't know. It's not looking good with Apple, even though they're wealthy, but it's just over. You can see the beginning of the end for that company. Anyway, according to Apple, the apps were removed because its policies, its policy ban apps that allow users to make anonymous or prank calls. Well, why were they on there for like years? And then it took a, a news agency to contact you. And then you uh, had to make a run to the office and delete them real quick, right? Come on, guys, we're not stupid. All right, as for Chase, the banking giant says it will never call customers or ask them for security codes, but the bank will not have to reimburse crimes. Here's the, here's the stuff you guys got to know. Uh, let's see, the government requires banks to reimburse customers in certain cases of fraud, but not when the customer is tricked or scammed into approving fraudulent transaction. If you're doing a phising scheme and they get you to give out your codes and that, that's on you, folks. You got to be smart. Anyway, Chase says it is working with the bank, the scammer used to try to get the funds back. All right, but the, but the scammer likely already withdrew the money, which means Grimes is back to square one, the customer, whatever, uh, square one in her quest to save up for a new home. So anyway, what happened is, I don't know how this happened. So I guess they had her move the money to another account at Chase, and from that Chase account, that scammer wired the money to another account and wiring seems to be the way it's gone. They move it to another bank and wiring seems to be the tool of criminals and they're all worried about Bitcoin, but it seems like wiring between banks is the real 
tool of thieves and criminals and politicians and governments. Yeah, that's that. Come on. And so once they wired to the bank, the bank obviously knows where it went, and they contact the bank and say, "Hey, where can you just reject this money?" And my question is, why is there like a a cool off period? Whenever you're going to do a transfer, you have to think about it for a day before you really want to do this. So you have to plan ahead, and that's like a cooling off period because people are such in a hurry. The uh, phones are being spoofed like this. The phone numbers, the uh, the uh, crypto addresses are being spoofed, and people are losing everything. It's almost like you need to calm down, cool off period. If you're going to initiate any transaction, there's like a 24-hour waiting period, and then you have to call a number, a official number, back and uh, verify it's true. So in this case, they spoofed the number. They called the client, the customer, and the customer thought it was the bank. I think from nowadays, if there's any request on that stuff, you hang up on them, and then you call the number back. You proactively call the bank. You dial the number that is on your card, that is on your statement, and then you talk to an official person. That's what I think you have to do just, just out of habit now. Even though it may be the bank, they're not going to ask you for passwords to move money. They're not going to do that. But most people do not know this. So I think if you do get a call, you say, all right, whatever. I got to take a poop. I'll be back in an hour and I'll call you back. And you're going to lose the scammer. They're not going to be interested anymore. You then call the official number again. It's going to dial direct to the bank, not to the spoof number. And uh, yeah, and then you talk to a real person. They'll say, no, we never called you. You say, oh, all right. That's cool. So spoofing phone numbers is legit. All right. Yeah, you just got to be careful about that. Now we got Apple out there with their sophisticated systems. Look at that. Yeah, go Apple. I can't wait for SpaceX to come out with their phone, their cell phone. I'm getting that thing. I will pay whatever they want to get the SpaceX phone. I'm not getting an Android. I can't wait to get rid of this Apple iPhone. And I just want to go with the Starlink cell network. That is where I'm focused on. Hopefully 2025, Musk comes out with that. And he moves lightning speed. He has everybody working nonstop to make this happen. It's almost like the Freedom Phone. You know what I mean? So that's what's going on. You got JP Morgan yet again. Not really their fault. I get it. But people are spoofing bank account, uh, bank accounts, bank phone numbers, and calling you to get them to get the customers of these banks to move money to another account and then they wire it out to their other bank overseas or somewhere, boom, then they quickly withdraw it and they're gone. And the bank on the receiving end, they're not gonna do anything about it. It's like, hey, it was a wire transfer. You know, that's all that all criminals use. Welcome to the club. Yep, so there you go. This is, this guys, this is happening on a daily basis. Again, not the bank's fault. Really, not in this case. There's some issues where the banks are at fault, but uh, like missing deposits, yeah, that's a different story. But uh, be careful out there, getting a phone call, hang up, call back the number on your statement, even though don't hit, you know, dial it, dial the actual number, and then uh, don't hit recall on the uh, person that called you, because you might get the scammer again. So call the official number and talk to someone at the bank in an official capacity. And uh, yeah, just be careful out there. They want your money. It's easier to steal and scam you on your money than to go work for the money and pay taxes and try to be honest. You're not going to get ahead that way. You got to be a scammer. That's basically what is happening. Everyone's become a scammer these days and they're going after everyone. They're going after these soft targets like this. And uh, say they get, um, they hit a hundred people. Say they get one, boom, that's a lot of money they just made for the day. Yeah, not good, not good out there. Not good, scary times. So I'm going to go through my iPhone, even though it's, I just see what I got on there, just to just have the bare necessities. Uh, even though they are downloading apps to spoof the number, you have to have the app to do the um, prank number and and spoof it, and apparently those are now gone from Apple. But I don't know. My attitude is keep as much off your phone as possible. And if someone's calling you that says who they are, there's no problem in calling back on the official number, even though you know you dial it yourself is what I'm getting at. Don't hit re redial or call back or whatever. You hit the number, the digit yourself, and then you get an official person at the bank and confirm what is going on. Did you call me? I don't know. I, it's just sad, man. Just be careful. I'm just amazed we're seeing all these stories out there. Scam, scam, scams. Or I like what they say here. Scams, schemes, and hacks. Yeah, not good. All right. Thought this would be interesting to share. I am sure we will have more of these coming up everywhere. Yeah, good times. All right, I'm out.